In this video, let's learn how to create and use a store in Svelte. Now before we dive into the code, let's understand the scenario we are looking to implement. In our Svelte application, we want to implement a simple counter. The counter should have a button to increment the counter, a button to decrement the counter, a button to reset its value, and of course, we need to display the count value in the browser. The scenario is very simple as you can see. You could definitely implement this with a single counter component. However, we are here to learn about stores. So we are going to assume that each of these functionalities are contained in separate components. So the count value needs to be shared across four different components, which seems like a perfect use case for stores. Let's head back to VS Code and understand the code needed to implement this scenario. We're going to do this in five simple steps. The first step is creating the count store. In the source folder, I'm going to create a new folder called store. Within the folder, I'm going to create a new file called stores.js. Within this file, we create our count store. For that, we first import a function called writable from the swelled slash store module. So import writable from swelled slash store. In the next line, we call the function to create a store. Let's assign the value to a constant called count. And the initial value of count will be zero, which we can pass in to the writable function as an argument. And there we have it. We have created our very first store in Svelte. Let's export this store to use it in the other four components. All right, now that we have our store, let's proceed with step two, which is creating a component to display the count value. In the source folder, I'm going to create a new folder called components. And within the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called display.sweld. In this file, we create a component that renders the count value to the browser. So add a script section and import the count store from stores.js. So import count, which is what we exported from dot dot slash store slash stores. Once we have the store imported, we need to subscribe to its value. We do that using the subscribe method on the count store. So count dot subscribe, and this accepts a callback function. The function receives the count value as its argument, which we can then assign to a local variable in the component. So let's create a local variable called counter, and within the callback function, assign counter is equal to value. We can then bind this counter variable to the markup. So h2 tag current count is counter. Let's now include this component in app component, import it at the top, and then head to the browser. We should be able to see the initial count value, which is zero. Let's now proceed to step three. For step three, we are going to implement the increment functionality. In the components folder, create another file called increment.swelt. Within the file, we add a button with the text increment and on click of this button, assign a handler called increment. Now we implement this handler. Add a script section and within the script section, we define the function. 
So function increment and within the function body, we need to increment the count value. And the way to do that is to use the update method on the count object. So begin by importing count from the store. Import count from store slash stores. Now within the increment function, we call count.update and this function accepts a callback function as its argument which receives the current count value as its argument. All we have to do now is return the same value after incrementing it by 1. So return value plus 1. Our increment component is ready. Let's include this in app component. Import it at the top and head to the browser. You can see that we have the button and when we click on it, the count value updates to 1. What happens here is that the subscribe method in the display component ensures the count value is updated in the component which then causes a re-render and we see 1 in the browser. So we can use the update method to update a store value. For our step 4, Let's add the decrement functionality by making modifications to the increment functionality. In the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called decrement.svelt. I'm going to copy the code from the increment component and paste it here. The button text is going to be decrement. The handler is going to be decrement and we return value minus 1. Let's also import this component in app component and include it in the markup. Save the file and head back to the browser. You can see that the decrement button works as expected. Now for the fifth and final step, let's add the reset functionality again by making modifications to the increment functionality. In the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called reset.svelte. I'm going to copy the code from increment component and paste it here. The button text is reset and the handler is going to be reset as well. But this time, instead of using the update method, we can use the set method since we don't need the current value of count. So count.set and we pass in 0. Let's import the component in app component and include it in the markup. Save the file and head back to the browser. If I click on reset, the count is back to 0. The counter scenario we set out to implement has been completed. Let me quickly go through what we have done. In the stores file, we created a count store using the writable function from the store module. The initial count is set to zero. To read the count value, we use the subscribe method on the count object. To update the count value based on its existing value, we use the update method. And finally, to set a specific value, we use the set method. Hopefully, you have the big picture of how stores work in Svelte. Now there is one final detail that we need to look at. At the moment, in display.svelte, we subscribe to the count value. But you might have noticed that we never unsubscribe. If the component was instantiated and destroyed many times, this would result in a memory leak. We can fix this by using the onDestroy lifecycle hook. So import onDestroy from Svelte, assign count.subscribe to a constant and then pass that in to the onDestroy function. 
the unsubscribe function gets called when the component is unmounting from the DOM. Now although this works perfectly fine, you'll soon realize that this pattern gets repetitive. Every time we need to display a store value, we need to subscribe and then unsubscribe in the onDestroy hook. To help us with this boilerplate code scenario, Svelte provides a special syntax. You can reference a store value by prefixing the store name with a dollar sign. So we can remove the local variable, on destroy, the subscription and the unsubscribing logic and instead we just have to include dollar count. So store value prefixed with a dollar sign. Now Svelte will automatically manage the subscription. Head back to the browser and everything works as expected. The code, however, is simplified to a great extent. So this is pretty much the basics about Svelte stores. Let's look at a few more concepts around the same topic in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all in the next video.